All right, let's check in with health. And apparently there is a key connection to unlocking our full potential by prioritizing gut health. Joining me to touch on the gut-brain connection is dietitian Kate Save from BeFit Food. It's wonderful to see you again. Let's start with the microbiome. What is it and how important is it? It's really critical that people understand that our human body actually hosts more bacterial cells than it does human cells. And that bacteria is known as our microbiota. And our microbiome is not just the good bacteria or the bad bacteria, or all of the bacteria, it's actually all of their genes. And their genes outnumber our human genes at least by 10 to one, and it is thought to be maybe even 100 to one. So we're more bacteria than we are human cells. I don't know if I feel better about about that or worse, but um, let's talk about psychobiotics. Um, tell us a little bit more. This is a very cellular level stuff you're bringing to us today. So when we talk about psychobiotics, it's the, the probiotics or bacteria plus the supporting food for that bacteria or prebiotics that work together to change our gut brain connection for better, hopefully. So what we've recognized is with the trillions of bacteria that are in our body, they have a really intricate relationship with our brain even to the point where they believe that the gut is the second brain and by gut I don't mean the gut the stomach I mean the, the track really from mouth to anus the whole way through with the most widest part studied being the large intestine or the bowel area because that's where a lot of the bacteria reside that's and where the magic happens right that's where that's <laughs> so, right. <to> speak. <laughs> so how do we improve our gut health I can think of a few things that are pretty obvious it's about diet more water etc are there anything Anything I'm missing there? Yeah, one of the key things is really thinking about not just the impact that it's having through, uh, I, I guess, gut health, so to speak, with our food, but it's actually how widely it's connected to the rest of our body. So most people don't know that around 70% of our immune cells are actually located in our gut, and around 90% of the serotonin, uh, our hormone that controls our sleep, our happiness, appetite regulation is also synthesized in the gut by bacteria. So food is critical because if you're not having a really plant-based diet with lots of nuts and seeds, whole grains, fruit and veggies, very Mediterranean style, avocado, olive oil, those sorts of, olive of oil. things. I'm, I'm getting hungry <laughs> talking to you now. <laughs> well, then you're not really nourishing the gut. So those things are key. And then when it comes to pre and probiotics, there can be added benefits. So over generations, I guess we've had a more and more processed diet, yeah. which has led us to lose some of that good bacteria. And also with people having being born by maybe C-section instead of vaginal birth and not being breastfed, we lose some of that contact bacteria that we would have had with the mother. So children at a very early age, when they develop their gut microbiome, may be a little bit different to what they were generations ago because of the environments that we're growing up in, and particularly with sanitizing and this very sterile environment that we live into. We used to make mud pies in the backyard and now kids are sanitizing every, you know, <laughs> I guess the generational difference is there. But um, how do we, uh, how does diet imp impact our mood? You talked about serotonin briefly. Uh, is that connected to dopamine in any other way, shape or form? Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, so given that 90% of the serotonin is actually synthesized in the gut by the bacteria, you really want to have a good balance of bacteria and you can end up with what they call um, uh, dysymbiosis where the, the gut bacteria isn't balanced and you've got overgrowth of bad bacteria that will then affect our ability to produce these neurochemicals which can improve our mood or um, the inability to really improve mood. So there's a case study called the SMILES trial by Professor Felice Jacker from Deakin University. And she looked at changing the diet. So going on a Mediterranean diet or modified Mediterranean diet compared to seeing a clinical researcher. Yep. And the people in um, each group actually had seven sessions over three months. But what they saw is the people that just spoke to someone had an 8% improvement in anxiety and depression scores, whereas the people that changed their diet had 32.3% improvement in their depression and anxiety. So we know that the diet is absolutely key for good health, yeah. immunity, brain health, mood, sleep, all of that. It makes sense. With some of these issues, uh, mental health issues, you do have to attack them from all sides in order to sort of overcome them, I think. But Kate, I want to thank you for joining us on the program. Talk us a little bit more about the gut and what's going on when it comes to our uh, health and happiness as well. My pleasure. See you next week.